Anton Newcomb began his career as one of the most rock and roll front men ever. The creative and spiritual leader of the Brian Jonestown massacre, he didn't just tell the band what to do, he enforced it. Did you want to be a rock star? No, and I still don't. I really don't. I, that's the thing I don't like because there's the excess of rock stars. You think about the stories of like tour buses and groupies and, and young girls and all this stuff. And to me, like I'm more of a normal person in the sense that, um, you know, I never um, used music to break the ice with women. <laughs> When you watch Paul McCartney play bass, an old Beatles clip or something, there's nothing he does that shows you that you could be Paul McCartney because you can't. He's, they're phenomena. And Jimi Hendrix or any of these, these people, and it just goes on and on with these entertainers extraordinary. But when I saw the post-punk people, and that, that is a genuine folk movement, and the way that hip-hop was a genuine folk mu movement, a music of the people, um, then I was like, these idiots, I can do that. I can do that. And it inspired me. I mean, you sound incredibly disciplined in your life now. Um, which is, you know, so weird thinking back to how you were when you were a young man. I have a family, so, like, my, my family depends on me to, to help take care of them, to, to, to play my role in the family, so I can't be, like, flying through the universe, you know, on some manic trip, right? Is that what you were doing? Well, progressively getting stranger, you know what I mean? But um, Because of drugs or? No, 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 I, see, I don't, I don't drink or, or do anything now, but um, it took me a while, see, um, if you must know, what happened in the 90s is I broke my arm really bad. I had a compound, double compound fracture, so it's like, and they kept me in the hospital for two weeks, kept me on morphine and Demerol, and that, sort of hard for two weeks. So that sort of hard way wired my brain into knowing that I could do that because I had had, before that I had had no drug taboos specifically. I wasn't really into like uppers or anything, but I wasn't really afraid of anything, you know, as a young person. Um, but so eventually when somebody said, hey, do you want to do this? I was like, oh, no problem. And that started the ball rolling into addictions, you know, like with, with opiates. Uh, and so to get out of that was difficult. It's not difficult to stop, it's difficult to just stay stopped, basically, right? I segued into drinking um, because it's so painful, and that led to me drinking, like, a lot. But not like your mates on the high street like you see in any of the towns here, right? of people like outside the chippy, right, leaned over, you know, but I was drinking like a liter of vodka and then going out to bars and just doing 24 hours a day for just years, you know, living in hotels in Iceland and doing all kinds of stuff. How collaborative are you? It depends on the situation. You know, some people are like, um, born with certain things, musical aptitude. See, I think of things orchestrally, so it all comes at once, which is very difficult for a democracy. Which, must, which makes it very hard to collaborate if people don't think on your... Depends, I'm a great guy on your team, wavelength. though. I'm a great guy on your team, though, but if, if you're on my team, you have to understand that, because I might beat you every single position on the team. What do you like on stage now, by comparison to how you were? I'm like watching Neil Young in Buffalo Springfield and less like watching uh, Pete Doherty throw a guitar into the audience for some weirdness. It's, it's, it's okay to uh, 
grow old naturally. I think older, grow sideways, something. I don't know. You know what I mean? I think it's good, actually. I'm enjoying it. I wouldn't want to be a teenager, you know? <laughs>